I'm Sylvia Lécuyer, and in this episode of Intimate Conversations, my guests are Florence Bolton, who plays Viola de Gamba, and Hi. Sébastien Marc, who plays Recorder. They will be performing with the ensemble La Rêveuse, The Dreamer, in Vancouver on April 21st at Christchurch Cathedral, The Birds Concert. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'm dreaming since I heard that uh, the title of that uh, that concert and that recital. <laughs> Florence, you are the co-founder of the ensemble La Rêveuse. Where does the name come from? Ah, from a piece for Viola da Gamba, written by a French composer, Marin Marais, you've certainly heard of, and uh, with the other artistic director, Benjamin Perrault, who is not with me tonight, we thought what name could we give to our ensemble? That's maybe the most difficult part. Playing music is not so difficult, but finding a name for your ensemble <laughs> can take a long time. And we love playing this piece together because Benjamin Perrault plays the oboe, so we used to play these Marin Marais pieces together. And one day we looked at each other and said, well, why not La Reverse? Because the dream is something important in music and in arts in general so that was it I think and in life yes, in life, in do, life. We, need, we need dreams we certainly yeah. do <laughs> <laughs> so florence benjamin plays the theorbo you have uh, clement geoffroy will be there here playing the harp harpsichord and sebastian you are the man of the recorder the multiple recorders i must say i just watched a video where you presented your family of recorders and it was absolutely wonderful how did you get to uh, pick up that instrument um i think when i was a kid um my uh, my first teacher uh, presented me the recorder as a starting instrument and uh, after two or three years of uh, recorder playing uh, she decided to, to to teach me the transverse flute you know the beautiful oh, yeah. shining uh, metal uh, <laughs> silver uh, transverse flute and uh, I think I was not so seduced by this uh, new instrument, and I told my teacher, "Oh no, I I liked the the poor uh, wooden recorder. This is my." <laughs> I felt uh, that that was my that was co more corresponding to my my taste or my personality. Uh, so this is a bit why I chose. You never choose your instrument, I, I think, but uh, it's it was a sort of a nice way to start. This yeah, you, you you do it the right way. I have a friend who's prepared a series of podcasts uh, where the uh, the artists uh, say how their instrument choose them. And yes, it, it's exactly. true. It is. It is so true. Uh, but also, in that uh, demonstration, the video of all the different the family of flutes that you have, you also were making sound effects. You were the beatbox. You was. You were the the showman. And then, <laughs> do you do that in kind of concerts of baroque music? Um, we are going to do some nice special things in the concert. Oh. Maybe no. Florence, tell me, uh, will we do some beatbox or uh, sound effects? Maybe well, the, 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 uh, we haven't thought uh, of that, but you give me ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, be, because we are uh, speaking of birds and birds. Uh, in more generally uh, uh, animals. I think it's we are not far from the, the sound effects and uh, uh, yeah the, the, the movie uh, uh, soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me about this birds program. Um, you also prepared a, a, a CD about birds, uh, and I love the title because it's a Le Carnaval des Oiseaux en Danger. So are you trying to save the? planet at the same time that you're saving our souls with the music? Well, I, I wish we could. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two, this is two projects. The one we will play in Vancouver is the Birds Concert, which is only on, on birds, on birds music. And the other part we will not unfortunately play in Vancouver is this Carnaval of Endangered Animals, composed by Vincent Bouchot, who is a French composer. And uh, we took the idea, of course, from Camille Saint-Saëns' famous uh, Carnaval of uh, des Animaux. And uh, yes, the idea was to 
to build something about ecology, saving animals uh, in, in music, because you have several projects on contemporary arts. I mean, uh, uh, plastician painters, and uh, yeah, they do uh, like this kind of thematics, but in mu music is rather poor on that thema. So we thought it would be a good idea to bring our own uh, stone to this building <laughs> and, uh, and propose this carnival. But in Vancouver, we will stay, we will uh, propose only the, the birds project because uh, the carnival is um, a real show. So it's more complicated to, to play it in a far away place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with projections and things like that. Yes, so that's we right. won't have the projections here. <laughs> so Sebastian, when, when there is a concert about birds, you must be terribly busy because, you know, with those flutes, <laughs> you, you, you certainly are the star of the show. No, yes, it's it's true that the, the flute is, is, when you think about birds, it's naturally the first instrument which you you will take for imitating birds. We have wonderful methods to teach uh, how to sing to some birds uh, and uh, of course the flageolet or the recorder is the chosen instrument for that and it's full of nice melodies and I think the tell me if I'm uh, wrong uh, Florence but I think these methods uh, mainly English were intended really to teach uh, these singing birds uh, uh, hundreds of melodies. It's, it's really very rich and very thick, these books. You mean you were teaching the birds how to sing? Yes, there was a kind yeah. of fashion, you know, in France, in the, well, also in, in England, but in France, mainly in the 18th century, to have cage birds, trained cage birds, and you would teach them, you know, uh, rhymes, uh, human uh, nursery rhymes, and the uh, it's, it's so uh, mad when you think about it, because I, I, I think maybe the birds taught us, you know, in very ancient times, at the beginning of humanity, maybe the birds taught us how to make music, because recorders are among the first instruments made in this time. So I think men wanted to imitate birds, but in the 18th century, the thing goes on the other way. <laughs> You have K birds and you teach them how to sing our music. <laughs> and also there was a fabrication of those uh, automaton, those, those uh, automatic machine, I mean, little robots or, you yes, know. Yes, I, I brought one for you today. Ah. <laughs> oh, a... what a beauty, show me that. Huh? Oh. <laughs> oh. Very nicely, huh? It is, what is wonderful, what, what bird is that one? Well, this one, I don't know, but um, when they built this kind of automatic birds in the 18th century, they were very careful about, you know, the, the, the bird, if it was a, a nightingale, they would carefully make a nightingale with the nightingale's uh, way of singing and all that stuff. So this one is a, uh, a bird of the 20th century, so it's, it's not so precious, and its name is Gaston. <laughs> <laughs> Gaston in the cage singing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but the um, the uh, the composers of the 18th century, even if it was not on the recorder, they have all the title of those pieces of music, Le Rossignol Amoureux, and they were very yeah. much inspired by the birds. Yeah. Y yeah, there's a special emphasis on two birds, on nightingales and cuckoo. But it's just the opposite, because the cuckoo has yeah. a very simple way of singing with two notes. Yeah. And the nightingale has a high level of virtuosity, and it's a, a real challenge. I, I guess you agree with me, Sebastian, but it's challenging to play Rossignol music because it's full of uh, <laughs> tricky, tricky things. Yes. Yeah, you, uh, you, you used to say in general during the concerts that the, the nightingale is able to sing 30 notes per second, yeah. which is probably uh, not possible for human beings. Uh, at least I, <laughs> I don't feel <laughs> like. Uh, uh, so, but 
what I find really wonderful with the birds is that, and with the human being, is that the human being is has something uh, so musical in his mind that every sound of the nature, and of course the, 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 the singing of animals, can be understood in a musical way. Uh, but, but of course, the, probably the, the, the birds don't, do not intend to make music. This is the human being that decides to hear it as a musical phenomenon. Yeah, we are yeah. we are have a tendency to anthropomorphize the animal. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I I was and, fine uh, looking for the, the good the word. Interesting mm. point because you you have always you know kind of things that can only in composer's mind. Sometimes you have duets between a cuckoo and a nightingale, something that will never happen in real life. Or you have solo birds, sonata for one bird, but uh, one bird will never sing on his own because when he's singing, he's talking. So you need someone to talk to. <laughs> oh. So that's very interesting to compare a human way of thinking and what's happening in real life. <laughs> Wow, you you have uh, in your program, of course, music of 18th century, French, English, coming from all sorts of places. But you also have a composer working for you, uh, which is surprising. Work composing for Baroque instruments. I think it's done more and more, though. I think those instruments attract the interest of composers. I know that in your video demonstration that you have online, Sebastian, you mentioned that. Why are the composers today interested in writing for recorders or viola da gamba or um, if I can uh, answer uh, Florence uh, about the recorder, I think the recorder uh, was a great uh, discovery for the composers uh, from the beginning of the 20th century, or let's say the, the middle of the 20th century, because the simplicity of the instruments, the how do you say naïf in English? Uh, naïf. naïf. Or, yeah, exactly. Uh, I think it, they, they were uh, seduced by this aspect and sound uh, uh, produ production with uh, all this that you can do. And also the fact that this instrument has no keys or a small amount of, of, of keys, you have the possibility always to uncover the holes and to produce glissandi, for example, or other effects that are fantastic for uh, modern music, for, for uh, contemporary music of, the, of this period. So Florence, this composer, Vincent Bouchou, is writing pieces specifically for your ensemble? Yes, and he knows early music very well, which is sometimes important uh, because uh, contemporary composers when they don't know early instruments, they write things that we cannot play sometimes because they are, they are used to compose for a piano or a clarinet that can play anything. And uh, as we say in French, it's instruments uh, à contrainte with early instruments. So you cannot write anything. Uh, so you have to find composers that understand that and like uh, early instruments. And Vincent Bouchot is one of them. And it's, so a long work together because um, he knows what we can play. We have been working with him for years and he knows what we can play. And if we can't, we phone him and say, well, that's not very easy. This, this bit is a, part, is a bit tricky. Can you rewrite it? And say, okay, 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 I will. <laughs> so we worked together before the, the thing is, um, came out. <laughs> well, I see now an interesting point because uh, People who are playing uh, music from ancient periods, they don't have the pleasure to work with a composer, but now you can do that, which is yeah. quite extraordinary. <laughs> and, and and very it, awesome. It's great to work together on, on the piece. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very interesting because Vincent is extraordinarily flexible. Um, he has a lot of humor. He knows what he wants, what he wants to hear, but at the same time is completely able to change some little things according to the will of the of the musicians. And that's fantastic to, to work with him. 
you mentioned earlier, Florence, that we won't see the whole program that you do for children or for endangered species and like, like that. But um, tell, tell us about th those projects a bit, because they're fascinating. Sometimes you do uh, theater. I mean, I saw you do something with uh, La Bruyère, Les Caractères, which is a, one of my books that I uh, adore. And yeah, yeah, it's a great book. Book. So normally you have a whole concept uh, and for different uh, audiences. What is your next project in that regard? Um, we will try to start something on uh, on time, which is a good subject <laughs> ah. because I, I have never uh, enough time, <laughs> and I lose my time of the, all the time. <laughs> so I thought time would be uh, an interesting project. So we we are working now for something that will come out in two years, but we will. I think work with Vincent Bouchot, this composer, uh, once again um, to have some um, concert programs uh, with the kind of mirrors between uh, Baroque music on time, you know, music with, uh, um, with cloche and uh, all, all that kind of thing that reminds us on time. Okay. And uh, modern contemporary music inspired by these pieces. And we will have also um, something for our children because uh, it's good when you think on a program to think at um, what kind of public will it interest. And it's good to think of, uh, well, the largest uh, possible way of um, getting in touch with many people. So yeah, children, communicating. People who know Baroque music, but also people who don't know and who, who will be interested because it's there is something to see in the concert. Or... <laughs> will you be able to to talk to the public during the concert, Sebastian? Because yes. I, I see that you do it very well in your videos. Um, generally, this task is devoted to Florence because okay. she's so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> That, that's wonderful. We have a, you have a, you won a prize. I'm so sorry. You won a prize last year uh, from this uh, regroupment of uh, music, Baroque music in Europe. Tell us about that. Yes, uh, it's called the um, European uh, Rema. I don't know the English title, but it's European uh, group or something of early music. Uh, yeah. And uh, Rema is, yeah. Regroupement, regroupement de early music in, in, in Europe, yes. something like yeah, that. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and so there was a, well, you, you, we, we just uh, sent them uh, the project of the Carnaval des Animaux en Péril, and we won. So it was a good, good uh, surprise. <laughs> and uh, I guess it was of, because of the subject, there are not so many things on on ecology and uh, and uh, biodiversity and all that stuff in, in music, especially in Baroque music. So I guess it was because of the originality of the of the thing. But it's good. <laughs> well, it's very intriguing. You talked about time. I don't know how you managed to do everything you do. Uh, I think, Sebastian, you belong to about half a dozen of early music ensembles, and including La Reveuse, and you travel and you play in opera and everything like that. I mean, it's completely, uh, it's crazy. You are, you must have been, of course, uh, stopped during the pandemic time, but you are extremely busy right now. Um, yeah, it's it's wonderful. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's uh, nice. We are so lucky uh, to to have these possibilities to play many repertoires and uh, with uh, fantastic musicians like like uh, musicians of La Reveuse, of course. I must say, I have a little faible, as we say in French, for La Reveuse. Because these, <laughs> yeah. these music, no, no, but it's, uh, <laughs> these musicians have a fantastic way of invited, uh, inviting uh, partners and uh, the art of basso continuo accompagnement. I don't like the, the, the word accompaniment because it's, it's really uh, playing together and uh, uh, there is no soloist plus uh, accompaniment, but it's fantastic to play with Florence and Benjamin. I knew Benjamin from a long time ago, Florence a little bit uh, later on, 
but uh, it's really a great, great uh, pleasure to play with uh, with Florence and Benjamin. Actually, the group is, uh, if you allow me, the, the group is presented as an ensemble of soloists, and that's what you are, because you each have your own music and terms to play. You're doing Sorry, an extraordinary... Let's play together. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're doing an extraordinary tour. You're stopping in Saint-Camille in Quebec. I didn't even know where it was. I had to look on the map. <laughs> and, and then you're coming to Vancouver, Victoria, and then Saint-Pierre in Miquelon on your way back to France. This is an extravagant tour. Yes, extravagant. And we, 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 uh, we will... Um, uh, Sébastien is going to New York, which is very chic after mm. Victoria, and we go to Saint-Pierre-et-Miquelon. That's not as chic as Sébastien, but... <laughs> but we're more yeah, exotic. It's nicer, it's nicer. <laughs> <laughs> but the nature my, is beautiful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's my first and maybe my last trip to Saint-Pierre-et-Miquelon because I've never been there, and I don't know how many French get the opportunity of going to Saint-Pierre-et-Miquelon because it's so far away from France. So... Um, <laughs> I'm I can, glad to go there. <laughs> I can predict you will hear different birds there and yes. probably not nightingales <laughs> and those seabirds <laughs> with those loud sounds. <laughs> it will be <laughs> completely different. <laughs> Well, this is absolutely a treat. I'm so happy to get to know you first before you're coming here. But um, thank you, Florence. Thank you, Sebastian, for chatting today. And uh, so for those who, yeah, we'll see you soon. And for those who are listening to us, uh, you can purchase your tickets to the concert on April 21st at earlymusic.bc.ca. And I hope you will join us for our next episode of those intimate conversations. <laughs>